For number eight, we're told that in the figure, an AC generator with EMF E is equal to the alternating EMF of sine omega dt, where the alternating EMF is 26 volts, and omega d is equal to 384 radians per second, and that is connected to a 4.33 microfarad capacitor. For A, we're asked what is the maximum voltage of the current. So we're going to be finding I. The past couple problems, seven, six, and five are very similar to this, with five being the most similar. Um, we're asked to find the current in five, and just like in eight, we are given V of C. So in eight, we're given V of C, I of C, and C. It's practically the same exact image. So we can use this formula. So after we copy this from earlier, we get this as the formula that we need to look at. Very similar to five, we start out with this part. We are gonna substitute our X of C to one over omega C, and we get omega C is equal to two pi F, and I is equal to V subscript C two pi F C. So this is copied from number five. However, we can also write down what we're given. Now, if we look at the formula from earlier, we see that we substituted out this W for two pi F. In this problem, we're given a W. Our W is 384 rads per second. So we can backtrack and actually erase this and just start from this step right here. So if we plug in our values, we're gonna get I is equal to V of C, which is 26 volts, times our omega, which is 384 rads per second, times C. You also need to write down that is connected to a 4.33 microfarad capacitor. And this D is actually uh, just a subscript. So we're gonna have V of D times C like this. Now that we properly have all of our values in, we can now write in our C, which is 4.33 times 10 negative six farads. We can plug all this into a calculator and see that our I is just going to be 0 0.04323 approximately, and our units is going to be in amps. So that is the answer for part A. For part B, we are asked when the f current is a maximum, what is the EMF of that generator? Well, this is similar to another question which is number two, when we're asked to find the maximum current, when the current is at maximum. So this is asking us to find the maximum current and our current question is asking us when the current is a maximum, what is the EMF? But what we can do is take this down here. This is the formula for it. We could also take this up here. However, we don't have a all of the values to plug in here, but we do have the values to plug in with this. So we're gonna use this. So we have this written out. However, we do need to make a few changes. We have the same the formula, which is I is equal to I, negative I max. And inside of here, we're gonna have a sine omega, and we have a D, T. And in here we have our phase shift. So this is our formula. And we can erase what we have here. Same rules still apply. We are looking at when the current is at maximum. So this means our sine value has to equal one. Or what we could say is that everything in here needs to equal pi over two because sine of pi over two is one. So writing in here, we can say that WDT plus the phase shift must equal pi over two. In here, we're gonna write that our t is equal to zero, so our time is zero. And if our time is zero, we're gonna get that our phase shift is equal to pi over two. Since we're finding the max value also, we can cancel out this negative. So we don't need the negative. We can get rid of it, turn it into a positive. If we rewrite this, we're gonna have i is equal to i max. We're going to have 
sine w subscript d t plus our phase shift which is pi over 2 and that's all in parentheses so this is what we have now we can if we did it like this um, with using cosine it's practically the same thing and we're going to see that this is practically the same thing because this is actually this part right here is actually going to turn in to our cosine now that we have this we can compare it to the other formula this part which is actually a simplified version of this and we can see that because um, if we have a sine of something plus pi over 2 it is going to be cosine we can actually bring this graph in to prove it so our red is um, sine and our cosine is blue the distance between here is actually pi divided by 2 With that logic we can just replace this entire sign and rewrite this as this right here. However, we can get rid of our uh, phase shift right here. So we can delete this and write this as i is equal to i max times cosine of omega d t and parentheses like this. And we said that the maximum current occurs when our sine value is 1. It occurs when this is equal to 1. Well, if this is all equal to 1, then we have to set the same rule inside of here, that this has to equal 1. And cosine of 1 is just 0. So our i is equal to i max times cosine of 0. And now our maximum current occurs here. So now after we have written this out, we can see that our cosine of zero is just one. And now we are gonna get that our i is equal to our i max. So basically our question was asking when the current is at maximum, what is the EMF generator? Well, to find the EMF generator, we actually need to use this formula right here, the one that we were given in our equation right here. We can put brackets around here to simplify it. Up here, we said that t is equal to zero. Well, solving this out, we basically proved t is equal to zero. So in here, in the formula that we were given, we can use t is equal to zero. And if our t is equal to zero, we can rewrite this as e is equal to the alternating EMF of sine omega d times zero. This is just gonna be zero. It's gonna be sine of zero. And sine of zero is just zero. So that means our E, when the current is at maximum, is just going to equal zero. Part B was pretty big, so we are just going to make a summary of it. We have this formula right here to find the maximum current, i is equal to i max, and then it's being multiplied by sine of omega d t plus the phase shift. So at maximum i max, sine has to equal one. All of sine has to equal one. Or we could say that inside of our sine has to be pi over two, because sine of pi over two is one. Now. To get this to happen, we could say that our t is equal to zero. And if our t is equal to zero, our phase shift is just pi over two. We could plug this in, which we did, and we got this right here. Now we can simplify this because sine of something plus pi over two is basically cosine of that something. So we did that here. Just like our sine of one, we're basically replacing all of this with our cosine. So this still has to equal one. Since this has to equal one, Basically, we're going to say that cosine um, of zero, right? So cosine of zero is equal to one. So then we're going to get i uh, is equal to i max times one. And we found our i max. Our i is now equal to our i max. This is our i max. So when we said t is equal to zero, we can now use that because we basically proved it. So we can go back to our problem and see that we were given this right here. And we're asked when the current is a maximum, which we found, what is the EMF of the generator? We needed T. We found what T we can use, we, which is zero. 
after we look at what we were given here, we plug in t is equal to zero. And if t is equal to zero, everything inside of it is going to become zero. So this is all gonna become zero. And sine of zero is just zero. And that means that everything times zero is gonna be zero. So our E is equal to zero. For part C, we're asked when the EMF of the generator is negative 12.2 volts and increasing in magnitude, what is the current? For this, there's gonna be two steps. First, we are going to use this formula that we were given to find what our omega is at this time. We can use either this formula or this one, which is the equivalent, to find the current. So writing out part C, we first write out this formula, formula that we were given. Now our E is um, negative 12.2 volts and our E of M is 26 volts and we were given that as well. For our E, we're going to plug in negative 12.2 volts and we're setting that equal to 26 volts. That's being multiplied by sine and then omega dt. We need to find our omega so that way we can plug it in here. So to do this, we can divide both sides by 26 volts and then take the sine, the arc sine of both sides to get rid of the sine on the right side as well. We are going to have negative 12.2 divided by 26. The volts are going to cancel out and this is gonna be arc sine. And we're gonna set that equal to omega d t. To do this, since we're dealing with omega, we need to make sure our calculator's in radian because as we can see, our omega is measured in radians per second. So after we put our calculator in radians, we have sine arc sine of negative 12.2 divided by 26, which is gonna give us omega dt is equal to negative 0.5 approximately rads per second. So this is our omega. But we are asked, um, what is the current? So to do that, we can look at this right here, or we can look at this. But since cosine is the simplified equivalent, we're just going to look at this. We don't um, need to make sure that cosine is equal to one because we're not trying to find the max. This is really step one and this is step two. After we write this down, we can plug in our omega and we're gonna have i is equal to i max times the cosine of the omega dt, which is negative 0.5 rads per second. Now we have to plug in our I max. And our I max, we found from A, where A was asking us, what is the maximum value of the current? So our I max is just gonna be 0 0.04323, and we can round this to be 0 0.04 amps. Now we need to plug this into our calculator, and we're gonna set it as 0 0.04, times cosine negative 0 0.5 amps times rad per second. And this is going to give us the answer 0 0.035. This is a rounded answer, so it's not exact. However, it is pretty close to what it should be. Um, there is a slight error up here where I said that this could turn into a positive since we're finding I max. It's actually incorrect. Um, that should stay a negative and it'll carry over to here and it'll only switch after it becomes a cosine because in the formula for the cosine we can see that there's no negative here. If we look at C again we need to have a negative in front of our I max like this, negative in front of our I max like this, and it's going to carry over into our answer. So our answer is going to be negative 0 0.035 amps approximately.